Hey devs, let's continue where we left off with this playing card model. So the game that I will be creating is called Big 2, not Rummy, as previously mentioned in the first video. The objective for now is just to create a playing card model that can create a deck of 52 cards, shuffle it, and flip cards. So let's begin. When I show the cards, I use the image name of the card. We can see that in the assets catalog and it is made up of the card suit, space, and the card rank. That is what we use as the image name and we easily get that from the card as this is of type card. The card struck has the rank and the suit which are strings. But we can improve this further to have the file name itself in the card struck. And the image can just refer to the file name property of the card struck. In the future, if for example, the format of the image name changes, then we can just change it in one place. This property file name is an example of what we call a computed property. Unlike the rank and the suit properties, this file name computed property does not store a value. Instead, it provides a getter to retrieve other properties indirectly. In this case, it retrieves the rank and suit to make up the file name. There is also a setter in computed property, but this is optional and we're not using it here right now. Now, would it be nice instead of the rank and suit having a type string, if we have the rank be of type rank that describes the playing card rank like ace, two, three, up to ten with jack, queen, and king. And the suit be of type suit which are the club, spade, heart, and diamond. I will create the type as an enum. Enum or enumeration in Swift allows us to create a type for a group of related values. I can create an enum suit with case clubs, case spades, or we can put them all in one line. Then let's add hearts and diamonds. Similarly, let's also create an enum rank with ace, two, three, four, and so on. As enum is a type, like any other types in Swift, we use capital letters. Normally, we should also be using singular keywords like heart instead of hearts. But because I will be using these values for the file name and our file name is using the plural form, let's skip this with an S for now. Or I can fix this up later and have the file name be singular. Then we'll use these enums as types for our rank and suit. Now our test data is broken because the rank and suit are no longer strings. We need to use the enum types. Now we can access the values of the enum type by using the dot syntax. Let's go back to the main view and see if the card view still works fine. Now that we have a proper playing card type, we can now create the deck of 52 cards. Our property cards here becomes a deck of 52 cards in an array. Let's create a deck struct. The deck struct, of course, will have the array of cards and I will create an initializer for the deck. Initializers are called to create a new instance of a particular type. If I create a property here called deck and initialize it with a deck type with open and close parentheses. This will call the deck initializer. To create one is by using the init keyword. In our initializer, when we create a deck of cards, we need to somehow be able to iterate over all the possible cases of rank and all the possible cases of suit. I want to be able to use a for loop here, whether a for each or just the normal for loop. There is a protocol to make the enum become iteratable. We use case iteratable protocol. And with case iteratable, we are given this all cases, which returns all possible values of enum that we can iterate. Now let's go back to main view and hopefully we can see all the 52 cards. It doesn't show. Maybe there's too many to be shown in a horizontal view. Let's put it inside a scroll view. Okay, 
so it is rendering all 52 cards. It's probably just too many. Let's try to show it in a different view because I want it to show in like a grid. Let's use a lazy V grid. This will allow us to lay out our views in a grid. There is lazy V grid and also a lazy H grid. The lazy V grid that we will use will require an array of grid item that describes the layout that we want. It's still not displaying our cards correctly. I think I found the reason why. If you notice, our enum are the words 2, 3, 4, and so on. However, our image name in the assets catalog are the numbers 2, 3, 4, and so on. So it is not displaying the cards as it is not providing the correct image name. I will have to fix this offline and put the number words instead of the numeric literal. And I will also fix the suit to be its singular form. Okay, I've fixed the image names. Now let's look at the suit enum and fix it with the correct values in singular form. Let's check the canvas. There is an error and let's see where that's coming from. Okay, the test data is still using the suit with the names in plural form. Let's fix that as well. Now we can see all the 52 cards. Let's put it inside a scroll view so we can scroll to see all of them. Now how about shuffle? Shuffle is a very common thing to do in an array that there is a function for it. Let's change this text here to be a shuffle button. And let's call the array method called shuffle. Since cards property is an array, it is valid to call it. Now that the cards are being shuffled and it is changing, it cannot be a let. We have to change it to a var. Now this is complaining that self is immutable. By default, since Swift UI views are structs, they are immutable. And usually, if we create our own structs, we can specify methods to be mutating. But a simple solution at the moment is to mark our card's property with at state. We are telling the compiler that this card's property is somewhere out there and is not part of main view which is immutable. So now it's valid to change it. We can also have a little bit of fun here and put it inside an animation function. Finally, let's do the card flip. I need to have a property selected that is of type bool. It will be set to true when the card is selected and the card will face up and false if not and the card will show its back. Now this is an error because the bool property selected is not initialized. You know all vars in Swift must be initialized. It is asking that we provide a value when we create a card. Well maybe let's provide an initial value for all cards to be false or not selected so that all cards will start off facing down. Let's also add a back image of the card in the assets catalog. Now we haven't changed anything in main view. All this is just changing the model. Let's have a look at main view and see if all the cards are facing down. Great! Let's see if shuffle still works. Now how do we change the value of the property selected? Let's add a tap gesture on our card view as this is what we will be tapping to make the card face up or down. Here I will set the value of the property selected to be true. We get an error. We are not allowed to do this as this card is a let. But wait, isn't it that we marked the cards with at state earlier so that we can modify it? That was a different case. This card here in for each is not the same as a card in the array here in at state. That is because we are working with struct. Remember the card is not a class and there are no pointers to memory. Each time we refer to a struct, it creates a copy of that struct. For example, in this for each statement, this card element here is a new copy. It is not the same as the card element in the cards array. The elements in this cards array can be changed as this is a var and we make it with at state. But this card that we extracted using for each is a new copy and this is a let by default and there is no way we can change it to a var. So how do we solve this? 
Well, one way is to make the card a class instead of a struct. That way, we will be working with pointers pointing and referring to the same object. But I don't want to do that. We can create a function in the card struct called flip and mark it mutating so that we are allowed to change this card struct. We can do that, but it won't solve our problem either because the issue is this card is a let and there's no way we can change it to a var. If only we are allowed to change this to a var, then this solution would be fine. What we need to be changing are the cards in this at state because those are the cards that we are showing in our view. We need to find this card copy in the array of cards here with the at state. And when we find that card, we'll change that card selected property as we are now allowed to do that as the cards here are mutable or can be changed. Let's find first this card here from the array of cards by finding its index. Once we know the index, we will be able to access the card. We know that the card exists in this array, but what if it doesn't? Then card index will return nil. That is why the type of the card index is not really an int, but an optional int. Suppose this card index is nil and we use it in this array, then the program will crash. We can always check if it is not nil like this, and if it is not nil, then we use its value. To use the value of an optional, we have to unwrap it. To unwrap an optional, we use an exclamation point. Okay. It's working. It's letting the card face up, but we cannot unselect and make it face down. That is because we only assign true. We need to assign its opposite of the current value so that it toggles with true and false. And it is not a surprise that there is a function for that in bool. It's called toggle. We can also remove this if to check if not nil and we can do an if let here straight away. And if card index is not nil, it will execute this condition and we don't have to unwrap the value as the type of the variable in if let is not an optional. Now I don't like this code here as it is not clear what it is doing. I want the tap gesture to be just flip card card and we have to pass the card to flip as an argument to this function. Let's create the function. Now it's missing the argument label. We need to put the card colon because that's how we define the argument of the function flip card. But it doesn't read very nice. Flip card card card. Let's look at Swift function and its argument. The argument has three parts. The external name, internal name, and the type. The external card name is used by the caller. You put the label here when calling the function. However, inside the function, we refer to its internal name. But the external name is optional. I can just use the same name for both external and internal. I can just have card name here for both external and internal. But I can also choose not to have an external name. I can just put underscore as the external name. Then I don't need this label here when calling the function. Now this looks better. Flip card card. I will just name the function as flip and I will change the internal name as card. Now this reads like English. On tap gesture flip card. We also have this card dot first index. It doesn't really clearly describe what it does. As this actually gets the index of the card, I want this to read card index is equal to index of card. Let's create the function index. Off is the external and internal argument name and this will return an integer but i don't like to use off here it doesn't make sense let's make the internal name card so the external name is off and the internal name is card as we said earlier this first index returns an optional value in cases where it cannot find the index and it will return nil so let's make the return value an optional int by putting a question mark that's it for this video. I am happy with the result. I now have a deck of 52 cards and I can shuffle it and flip it. 
In our next video, we will create our players. In Big 2, there are 4 players and we will deal the cards to these 4 players. See you in the next one. Happy coding!